Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going over another example in drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams. Uh, I believe this is the fourth example, so let's just jump right into it. All right, first step you're gonna do in these problems is just solve for the reactions, right? So we want some uh, forces in the y direction, upwards being positive and set that equal to zero. And then we have the forces a y, technically a x, and then b y. Okay, these are the reactions we want to solve for. So sum of forces in the y direction, we have a y plus b y minus eight times two, so 16, right? That's just from the distributed load, total distributed load, and then that equals to zero. So a y plus b y equals 16, okay? so. Next, what we want to find out is just keep solving the reaction. So we'll take a sum of moments around A, right? So counterclockwise equals positive, so that equal to zero, all right? So we have BY times four, and that wants to push it in this direction, right? Which is positive, all right? Minus um, eight, times two from the distributed load times five, right? Five is because if we replaced this distributed load with a single point load it right in the middle, right? So two divided by two is just one. And then this distance is just five meters, okay? We're going quite kind of fast, but if you need more practice, just go back to the previous videos. I go in uh, more depth about that, right? So two times five, 10, 80. So four by equals 80, and then 80 divided by four equals 20, okay? So by equals 20. So we can just simply solve for a y now, you plugging by back here, right? So something plus 20 equals 16, a y equals negative four, right? So these are your two reactions. Okay. Now, for simplicity's sake, um, or you know what, something even better that we can do, um, we can we can just draw this arrow down, right? Once you solved your reactions, right, um, all of them to avoid confusion, it's a you can reassign the directions of the arrows so that it visually makes more sense. All right, so four kilonewtons going down and then this equals 20 kilonewtons, all right? So uh, what we went over before in the shear force diagrams, make sure you have these labeled kilonewtons. Okay, so whenever it's going down for shear force, just follow it, go down, right? This is negative four, okay? And then all the way, since there's no other forces applied between zero and four, right? Um, we can just keep that constant, right? So when you see this this reaction at this point, at point B, just simply follow it. So go up by 20 kilonewtons, and that equals 16, okay? Uh, we know this is a free hanging edge, so it'll just go back to zero, and because it's a distributed load, it'll look something like this. But again, if you're not sure, right? Uh, two simple checks you can do is just um, is just calculate this whole distributed load, right? So the whole force of this distributed load is eight times two, right? Which equals sixteen. And since that's going downwards, right? We know that it'll it'll decrease by sixteen from from this point to this point, right? And since it's a uniformly distributed load, we know that it's just a steady rate of decrease. Therefore. It would just be uh, from 16 and then minus 16, and then that's equal to zero, right? So your shear force diagram would look something like this, okay? So next is the bending moment diagram, okay? Bending moment diagrams in units of kilonewtons times meters, okay? So first thing you wanna do, find areas under the curve, okay? So this area and this area, all right? So this is negative four times by four, right? This distance is four, this distance, okay? 
So that equals negative 16. Right? Okay. So we go from 0. Since it's a rectangle, go down 16. Right? And then this area we have 16 times 2. Right? The distance from here to here. And because it's a triangle, times it by a half. That's the area. Okay? That equals 16. All right. Now, question for you. What does this line look like from this point to this point? Pause the video if you, um, if you want to figure that out for yourself. I'll give you three seconds. Okay. If you answered something like this, you'd be um, not quite correct. <laughs> that, was a, that was a trick. Okay. Yeah, because the way you want to think about how to draw these triangles, right, is simply like this, okay? Since this is a positive area, we know that we are going to go in this direction, right? Because we are just adding to this negative 16, okay? So that's the first step. Just know that this is a positive area. This is a negative area, right? Negative areas go negative. Positive areas go positive, okay? Now we know that our destination is zero, right? So that's a good thing, right? So, and we also know that it increases something like this, right? But because it's not a rectangle, because it doesn't increase a set amount, right? It's not a straight line, right? So once again, right, if we determine something like this versus something like this, right, how do we know which one is correct? Well, the thing is, right, if, if we just split this triangle into two, right, we, we know that the one over here, this area, is greater than this area, right? So, which means that in the first half, there is going to be more positive going up, right? So, more positive equals faster going up, and then finally, when you get to zero, well, you have a slower rate of increase right? So faster rate of increase, slower rate of increase, right? Faster rate of increase corresponds with more area, slower rate of increase corresponds with less area. Okay, so we can just draw you know, curved, we can just label that real quick, right? That's for your uh, that's for your uh, technical points, okay? So, I, I hope that made sense. Quick example today, but uh, to summarize, basically what you wanna do, always number one, solve for your reactions. Once you solve for your reactions, right, um, to draw shear force, just follow the shear force going down, the forces, right? If it's going down, you go down. If there's nothing in between, just remain the same, right? If if you have a reaction here, which is new to some of you, right? Just go up, right? Go up 20, right? Just follow it. Negative four, going up 20, you're ending up at 16, all right? And then for a distributed load, make sure to go down at a steady rate, okay? And same thing with the bending moment, just convert shear force, uh, shear force diagram the areas underneath or above the curve, right? Not above the curve, just areas under the curves into lines, right? So you're just taking the area and just subtracting, okay? Or adding. So that's uh, that's it, all right. Um, I hope this video helped you. And, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll post more, more videos, more practice is always the key. Don't be frustrated if you can't solve this immediately because these really do take some time and practice. Um, and but once you once you have more practice going, it's going to be uh, extremely easy to just uh, grasp the harder problems. So we'll be covering frames later on. But for now, I hope this made sense. And yeah, I'll see you next video. Goodbye.